Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab with the second part of our Pioneer Nexus 2 review series. Now, last week we talked about the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2s, which I concluded are nice, worthy upgrades from the original Nexuses, but nothing really mind blowing, you know, nothing that's going to make me run out and desperately upgrade. You know, they're, they're good, nice, solid improvements, got no beef with them, but yeah, just not mind blowing really. The Nexus 2 DJ 900 Nexus 2 mixer in my opinion, is a much bigger step forward over the original 900 Nexus mixer that they had before. You know, there's a lot on here which has made its way from the DJM 2000, which was actually my mixer of choice in the last generation over the 900 Nexus. Um, there's a yeah, there's a lot more here, I think, in terms of upgrades, which definitely make this more of an essential purchase than the Nexus 2 players. Now, let's get into some details why that is. As with the CDJs, the new mixer has been beefed up and sized up a little too. It's noticeably heavier than the previous model, and the actual control surface has been made larger to accommodate the few extra controls on there. In general though, the 900 Nexus 2 feels very similar to its forebears in use, and so the comfort factor for most DJs will be high, with little to confuse them. The fader section is largely as it was before, but with the addition of a crossfader using Pioneer DJ's Magvel technology. Whilst not as beefy or adjustable as the Magvel Pro on the DJM S9, it is without doubt the best fader Pioneer DJ have shipped on a four-channel DJM to date. Some DJs might find the lightweight and subsequent bounciness of the fader a little bit hard to control, but I easily adapted to it. In terms of inputs and outputs, the Nexus 2 is as well furnished as its predecessor, the only real difference being the switch to four phono inputs and losing a couple of line level inputs in the process. It's great to be able to choose your preferred layout, whichever sources you're using. So although some will bemoan the reduction in line inputs, for me, the change is a positive one. I'm very glad to see the addition of an 8th inch headphone socket, a small but nice addition. There are still two mic inputs on the Nexus 2, but they're now both on the rear with none on the top panel. I don't use a mic very often, but when I do, I'll generally just plug into the top mounted one on the original Nexus. So this is not quite as convenient, but I can see why they've done it. For starters, they've had to make room for the pair of USB ports now found on the top, which allows for simultaneous hookups of two laptops. This is great, although it's currently rather limited, as there's no support for Serato DJ Club Kit or Track to Scratch at this point in time. That really was a massive pull for the original Nexus kit towards the end of its life. It was the system that could handle everything, and I know a lot of DJs who took advantage of that to run some really cool setups. Right now, the Nexus 2 is really only useful for Rekordbox DJ, and with the CDJs not supporting other platforms either, that means the whole system is a lot less flexible, really. That can and should change fairly quickly. Pioneer DJ obviously do want everyone using Rekordbox, but that's never going to be the case. The sound quality of those interfaces is much improved. They sounded noticeably worse than the analog or digital inputs when switching over to them on the previous model. With the Nexus 2, there's no apparent difference that I can hear in that situation. The sound quality of the mixer is improved generally too, in quite a noticeable way. I've taken a lot of high-end mixers to my Saturday residency in recent months, and they all made the original 900 Nexus sound rather poor by comparison. The Nexus 2, however, easily holds its own against the best competition in the sound stakes. The DJM S9, Pioneer DJ's most recent mixer, was their best sounding mixer to date, and this definitely goes a step further even than that. One thing which always hurt people's impression of the sound on the Nexus 1 was the fact that so many idiot DJs would regularly overdrive the whole mixer, redlining constantly. So I'm glad to see the new clip lights above the channel and the master. I feel like maybe a rubber hand coming out of the mixer to administer a slap to the errant DJ might be better, but this is a step in the right direction. So we move on to the effects now, and they have been hugely improved over the previous model. It wasn't that the effects were poor quality on the original Nexus, they were very good, but rather the level of control you had over them was just so limited compared to, say, the DJM 2000 and Pioneer's own external effects units. We've now got the all-important frequency divider buttons over on the right. That means you can choose to apply an effect to the bass, mid or treble frequencies individually or in any combination, and that allows much more creative uses of effects like delay, echo, the new ping pong delay, as well as the more loop based effects. I really like the slightly bonkers new helix effect, and I know the vinyl break will have many fans. 
The display screen has been upgraded nicely, as has the section where you can select the beat lengths now with individual buttons for different beat divisions. The color effects have also received a big upgrade in that you now have the extra parameter control previously found on the DJM 2000. The color effects on the Nexus One could be rather overbearing. The filter resonance was very harsh and the white noise was basically unusable on a playing channel. Now you have the option to pull things back somewhat and operate those effects in a far more restrained and subtle fashion. The sweep effect from the DJM 800 is back, being sweep on one side and gate on the other, so you don't lose anything in its return. The beat effects and color effects are all still post fader, which is essential in my opinion, and the way that the actual effects engine processes audio seems to have been tweaked as well. You can now capture short sections of a track or individual sounds far more easily like you used to be able to do with the DJM 800. That's a big improvement for me, especially when the system is all hooked up via Pro DJ Link and everything is all quantized to your beat grids. It's seamless. The send and return loop, which was previously thrown in with the beat effects, now has its own section at the top instead. Although it still shares channel assignment with the beat effects, it means you can have a combination of the built-in and external effects running at the same time, which is great. One issue I have with the new send and return system is that when assigned to an individual channel, it's pre-fader. That seems like a bit of a step backwards to me, as it wasn't the case on the original Nexus. You do have the option to use the effects loop now in a proper send and return fashion, returning the affected audio into another channel, which will be great for many types of effects unit, which can be run fully wet. Although with that being pre-fader too, the functionality is kind of compromised. The only way to get around this is by assigning the effects loop to the crossfader, which then makes it all post-fader, but I know plenty of DJs who don't use a crossfader. There's another exciting development with the effects loop though, and that is the ability to connect an iPad via USB and use an app like Pioneer's own software version of the RMX. It will charge your iPad in use and uses the mixer itself as the audio interface, so latency is pretty good. It's a great concept and sounds cool in use. It must be said though that the RMX 1000 app is not very good. It sounds great, but replicating the exact layout of the hardware is just a real failure in terms of a product designed for touch. The GUI just isn't appropriate. I had a lot more fun using apps like Tornado and LiveFX with the mixer, simply because their user interfaces have been specifically designed for an iPad. The RMX app also takes its BPM clock from the mixer, I'm assuming over MIDI, but for some reason the quantizing when tapping in drum loops is way off, whereas the hardware gets it right most of the time. Overall, the feature is cool, but I'm eagerly awaiting some better software to use with it. So in general, we are seeing cool upgrades across the board with the DJM 900 Nexus 2. There are a couple of things I don't like. I've long been dubious about Pioneer DJ's VU meters and the Nexus hasn't really changed that. I'm no sound engineer, but I'm very confident in stating that taking all the bass out of a track reduces its overall volume. But the VU meters here tell me otherwise so I continue to have doubts about their accuracy. The other thing I don't like is the effects assignment situation. I do love the new blue lights showing you which channels the effects are assigned to, those are great. But on a DJM of any flavor, I always have the effects assigned to the crossfader. It's the way you get postfader effects with both the crossfader and the upfaders, all good. Except on the 900 Nexus 2, they've relocated the crossfader effects assignments to the left of the knob, seemingly for no reason, and what's even worse, they're now backwards. So you go clockwise from B to A. This makes no sense on any level at all, and I can't think for the life of me why it needs to be changed. It's a really odd choice. One final thing to show you, the day before these went back, Pioneer DJ dropped the Rekordbox DVS plugin. I tried it out quickly with the control signal from their website, using the 900 Nexus 2 as the interface, and the setup was quick, easy, and seemed to work great. We'll be covering that in far more detail in a few weeks time. Now to wrap up the pair of videos about the Pioneer Nexus 2 stuff, I've taken a slightly unusual step and that is I've waited a week until after the gear has gone back to Pioneer in order to do this wrap up. And that's because I wanted to do a couple of gigs with the original Nexus kit, just to put into perspective my thoughts on the new stuff and see, you know, is there stuff I missed looking back? You know, am I, was I distraught that I didn't have certain features? Well, when it came to the players, not really. You know, I stand by what I said in the first video. They are excellent players. In a lot of ways, they are better than the original Nexus is, but it's a credit to the original Nexus players that actually I didn't really miss that much. I was already kind of so familiar with these players 
that actually all the stuff they've upgraded, you know, I've kind of learned to live with already. So there wasn't really much that I missed on those. These were the best players on the market, not even a little bit, you know, by a country mile, the CDJ2000 Nexus was the best media player on the market. The Nexus 2 has come along and is slightly better and therefore is automatically the best media player on the market. You know, the only stuff that comes close is Pioneer's own lower end kit. So yes, they are the best players on the market. No, they're not a gigantic upgrade. The mixer on the other hand, I used the original DJM 900 Nexus in the club at the weekend and you know, the upgrades are so big on there. For me, the way I play, they're massive. I mean, sound quality is definitely improved on the Nexus 2 without question, that's much better. Two USB ports at the moment, pretty limited because the support isn't there for software, but eventually they've got to open that up in my opinion. So that will make, you know, for a really smooth, it will deal with, you know, vinyl, CDJs, playing off laptops, all these options will be available. It's a very flexible mixer. The effects on the 900 Nexus 2 are much, much improved without question, way better than the previous one. I mean, two minds about the send and return stuff. Um, but that, you know, the actual iPad thing is really interesting. I don't think it's fully, you know, ready quite yet, but there's so much potential with that down the road. So that's all, all great. Um, you know, little touches here and there, like the little headphone jack and that kind of stuff is all really good. This is all stuff that the 900 Nexus was lacking in, you know, areas it was lacking in. So big improvements there all round. And I'm definitely, you know, you can't say with the 900 Nexus 2, that it is the best mixer in the way that you can with the CDJs. Because everyone's taste is different when it comes to mixers, you know. People love rain mixers like this. People love Allen & Heath. People love rotaries. People love scratch mixers, you know. Pioneer's own DJ MS9 will be a better mixer for a lot of DJs because they're just all about the turntablism and stuff. So that will actually be a much better mixer than Pioneer's own 900 Nexus 2. But if you're talking from an installer point of view, from somebody who's kitting out a venue, the 900 Nexus 2 is a very safe choice because it's very versatile. It will cope with all different kinds of genres. It's got all the inputs, you know, all the different kinds of inputs that you might need. The sound quality is great. And there's a very good chance you will be installing a pair of CDJs from Pioneer. And so what makes sense? I'll oh, just buy the whole system. You know, I'm going to get these Nexus 2 players. Well, I'm not going to mess around with a different brand of mixer. I'm just going to buy the Pioneer mixer, get it all from the same place at the same time. Job done. Don't have to think about the DJ booth because I just install that stuff. And I would certainly not blame any installer for doing that. No question. But I don't think it's that healthy for the industry. You know, back in the day, it used to be the default turntables, of course, were Technics 1200s. Every booth had a pair of those. But who knew what kind of mixer you were going to turn up and find in the booth? You know, because Technics didn't make a mainstream mixer. So there wasn't, you know, this automatic default, Technics turntables, Technics mixer, that didn't exist. So we saw a lot more variety in DJ booths. And now because the CDJs are so prevalent and Pioneer have a very excellent, high quality mixer that will go with them, that just makes it easy to buy that whole system in one. So I really want to see more competition in the market, in the media player space. There's already lots of great competition in the mixer space. But without that competition in the media player space, Pioneer will just continue to own the booth. And as a DJ, I'm not mad at that, not at all. As someone who reviews this stuff and commentates on the industry, I think that's a shame. I think there needs to be more variety there again, because I miss those days when you could turn up and it could be a Citronic mixer or a Rain mixer or a Yuri or Formula Sound in the UK. You know, who knew what you were gonna get? And often you would find some really cool stuff doing that. And nowadays, yeah, it's just default, you know, Pioneer Nexus across the board in a decent venue. That's probably what they're going to have. Which, is, again, it's cool for me. I like Pioneer stuff. I use their stuff. But I don't think it's that healthy. That's all. So, thank you for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.